for no you reason. You me one more time, we're going to have problems. You are a public servant. <laughs> and the white we don't thing. have to listen to you. We hate two-faced um, people. And you just admit so on like camera that you're two-faced. I'm going to take him to the office. He doesn't want to identify himself. We already know who he is. So, okay. I didn't tell you. Sit on the bumper. Listen, you buddy. Said you want the license. Listen. Welcome back to the Lackluster Channel. In September of 2023, Deputy Pocket of the Grand Isle Sheriff's Office was on patrol just a few clicks south of the Canadian border when he saw a vehicle driving towards him in the other direction, owned and operated by Stephen, who had lived near two other deputies of the small agency for a number of years. The road leading into the town has a speed limit of 50 miles per hour and is reduced to 30 upon reaching this gas station. After seeing Stephen's vehicle, it appears he is traveling close to the posted limit, but there is no radar available to determine his actual speed, but Deputy Pocket makes a U-turn and begins to follow Steven, activating his emergency lights. You can then observe brake lights as Steven immediately begins to pull over, far ahead of the deputy, who then pulls in behind Steven. Deputy Pocket then approaches, a perfect time to activate Attorney Shield, but instead, about 25 seconds pass before Eric, the passenger, begins recording. Here you go, car. Nope, nobody's gonna talk. Wonderful. Play the fifth. That's fine. Is there any weapons in the car or anything like that? That'd be a question, sir. I can ask you as many questions as I want. You don't no, we to told you them. we don't answer them. That's fine, I can still ask them. You wanna get that back to him for me? Turned out 15, right. you know. Are you active duty in the military? Wonderful. Hang tight in the car, don't get out. The free expression of their constitutional rights appears to have frustrated the LARPer. Annoyed, Deputy Pocket returns to his cruiser. Three minutes pass and a secondary unit arrives, one of the neighbors mentioned earlier. Hey man, what's up? What's going on? Not much, you? Going home. Everything all right? Yeah. Okay. Why? Just wondering. Okay. Just How are you going home. body camera on? Yeah. How come it's not blinking? It doesn't have to. It's on. Don't you worry about it. It's on. We'll follow the Freedom from Action Act for that too, make sure. Whatever you gotta do, boss. Okay, there he goes. Now it's on. It's been on. Okay. He just asked me to come here, just seeing what was. Because he didn't like that we don't answer his frivolous questions. You don't have to. Exactly. The driver has to, you know. He did exactly I gave him my information. I say he did. So he called you for backup because he didn't like that we weren't going to answer his nonsense questions. That's all it is. No problem. We have nothing to hide. We don't. We're just heading home. No problem. Did I say you did anything illegal? No. You can't because there's no probable cause to say such. And. Stop before. I don't know. He said he's going too fast. Okay. I think okay. I was doing about 35 miles an hour way back there by the jolly. Okay. All right. Whatever. I don't know. He didn't tell me. Okay. He's asking me where I'm going, what I'm doing, all this stuff. It's like, what's what's going on here? Okay. Just we ask everybody the same questions. Yeah. All right. No problem. Back up with you here in just a minute. I was just curious what was going on there, Tom. 15 minutes is the total weight on a strap shot, right? 15 minutes uh, what you got? Yeah, at least from time to time, it's on exact uh, 15. I think that's like the regulations. I get out of here, maybe I'm pretty proud. You won't send him anywhere. He was telling you there's a rule for this. Sounds like he's coming back up. It's a lawful thing. We never give you a hard time. I'm not saying you gave us a hard time, but it's oh, interesting you're acting I, differently with that guy in the car than oh, you Oh, how I act. From now on, now when I get stopped, I don't answer any questions. And you don't have to. I'm not going to put myself in whatever terms no. that you're that. That's how I practice. I'm not saying it's my lawful. It's 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 my right too. As yeah. it is, you know that. Stephen was issued a warning and was free to leave. But two months later. Deputy Pocket was parked off the main road and noticed Stephen driving past. The deputy pulls out slowly and begins a left turn to follow Stephen. And based on this dashcam video, roughly 10 seconds pass before he activates his emergency lights. By the time Little Pocket turns onto the road, Stephen's vehicle cannot be seen, and another 10 seconds pass before his vehicle is even in frame already parking in the post office parking lot. And by the time the pocket deputy pulls into the lot, 
Stephen can be seen walking up to the entrance, but stops and turns around before entering. Audio is not available, as Deputy Pocket failed to activate his body-worn camera in a timely manner. But eventually, he gets it turned on. Because you're getting pulled over. Get back in the car. Get back in the car. We're not playing this. Grand Isle 16, St. Albans, LB 75 in the post office parking lot. 16 and 14, 25. Get back in the car. Come here. Come here. Stop. You're getting pulled over. Enough. Enough okay. Do you have anything on you? Okay. Just, just Don't face touch the car. Me. Just face the car. Don't touch. Stop, me. sir. Stop. You're gonna pull over for an inspection ticket. Just stop. Why are you? Okay. Because you got out of the car on a traffic stop. You can't do that. Do you understand I'm me? Kidding. Stop. Yeah. Okay. Just put your hands on your back. Okay. Stop. Stephen claims he did not know he was being pulled over until the moment he turned around, but Deputy Pocket now claims that Stephen got out of his vehicle during a traffic stop. This is demonstrably false, but Deputy Pocket will continue the lie throughout the encounter when addressing backup units, knowing that it would sound like a much more egregious act than the truth of catching up to Stephen just before he entered the post office. This is enough. Enough of is that what? a gun or? Yeah, this is my weapon. Why are you touching my stuff? Because you got out of the car on a traffic stop. You, you can't do that. I came in here. Bro. Well, I told you to get back in the car. That's not how this works, okay? That's not how this works. Yeah, but your your tone of voice when you speak to me is not very. Well, when you get out of the car on a traffic stop, you can't do that. And then you didn't get back in when I told you to. I went you to get my car. Oh, man, are you been here, man? Hey, you well, when you see the lights and the sirens, the door. it's for an inspection sticker. Enough. Do you have your license on you, man? Can you stop touching me? Well, when you get out of the car on a traffic stop, that's not safe for me. Do you understand? I that? wasn't even that's how we stopped do stuff. by you. Yes, you were. Oh, that's what the lights and the sirens mean. Do you have your license and registration you? on you? Yeah. Do you have your license, registration, insurance on you? Yeah. Do you have any other weapons on you or, or in no, the vehicle? I don't. Okay. Hop back in the car. Enough, okay? Just Enough listen to what I tell you to do and we don't have any issues. That's it. Do you understand? I have been listening. I asked you a question. Well, you didn't listen because I told you to get back in the car and you didn't. Stay in the car, pup. Stay in the car. Nice dog. Okay. Get your license, your registration, and your insurance. Stop with you your understand? Tone of voice. Hey, you stop. stop. It. You're being stop. ridiculous. Stop. Just chill. So I'm being respectful. Yeah. I was told to okay. get my mail and he jumped out and you're yelling at me, man. Huh? Well, you know what? We can deal with that after. Right now, listen to what he has to say. Okay? I was just okay. You grab me. Are you all right? Around. Are you all right today? I'm sick. Would you stop? Actually, hold on. I'm gonna turn your car off. Respect. Hold on. I'm gonna turn your car off. I don't. My here. license is right there. Grab it. All right, grab it. Yeah. Man, lately you've been giving us a lot of problems lately. How am I giving you a problem? And then, and then the next time you sit by the road, you trim us up like we're your friend. But then we, oh, stop, then we I'm stop. Not showing anyone up and stop. And you've done it to me too, so you, we seem to have when, as long as we're not turning our blue lights on, we're cool, and the moment we turn our blue lights what? on, you pop an attitude. I never said a problem. What's the... Give you me your license. You guys don't have attitude right now. Give me your license. I don't have an attitude. You'll know when I have an attitude, and I don't have that right now. Is... Step to the front of this car. When you see... To go to the front of the car. car. Why are you not listening? I have been listening. You guys are being really... Good. We're not. We're, we're being... Oh. Well, I can tell you, we're treating you with respect and being fine with you. Ah, when but you come up and grab me when I was just standing there. Well, well, here's the deal. When you get pulled over by the police and the police tell you to do something when can the blue lights listen? are on, no, you get back in the car. Listen. We don't have you to have listen. You have to listen. You're my servant. No, we no. don't have to listen. You, are, you, you have know, to listen you're not to us. Play, you're, you're not playing the... I'm not playing, dude. Yes, we don't have to. Exactly I was doing. out of my we car when we pulled in. I was already out of my car going to get my mail. Stop. We don't have to listen to you. You're not going to... Sit down. Sit down. So what do you want from me? Sit down on the bumper. He's telling you what to do, so sit down. Stop. Sit this down. Is really... No, what's really scary. is you acting the way you're acting. We're sick of it. For one second, be like quiet while I talk to you. You want to come chum us up when we don't... <laughs> we're not doing law enforcement. Then you act like this, a raging jerk, and with your How mic. Stop I... interrupting me and Gets shut your mouth. Car, tries to go inside. Doesn't listen to anything No, wow, said. is we're sick of your crap you know, and the way you act. Him down, took a gun we're sick of it. Don't come pulling up well, to us anymore and acting like we're friends and then pull this on traffic stop. We're done. 
you understand me. Don't pull up next to us anymore. How am I acting? Because, I was because you're two different people. When the lights come on, you're oh I'm you're my servant, you do what I say. Then when That's not what I said. Yes it is. You said I don't have to listen Let's to you. Let's just start the you paperwork and get it going and then we'll get it. It's a don't two way street. It is, but well, when you are two faced you, you, like you I'm not two faced. Yeah you are. Now you're two faced. You have, you have your, hey. The sergeant on scene now adds to the gaslighting. First, by stopping the bully lecturer to ask for Steven's license. Hey, you have your license? Yeah, I was trying to get it, but I'm getting all roughed up. We're, to get we're not roughing you up. Did you, hey, over here. The sergeant then directs Steven to pay attention to him, and after having been repeatedly asked for his driver's license, Steven turns to get it for Sergeant Allen. Yeah, you are. Now you're too fast. You have, do you have your, hey, you have your license? Yeah, I was trying to get it, but I'm getting all roughed up. We're, to get we're not roughing you up. Did you, hey, over here, Mr. Bill. Sick of it. So, okay. I didn't tell you, sit on the bumper. Listen, you buddy. You want the license. Listen. No, I'm what fucking part of listen do you not understand? What do you want me to do? Did you not? To listen. I'm listening. What? Do Keep you your ass on the bumper and listen. They you tried walking away from you? Yeah, and he had a gun on I him. was already out of the car before he pulled in. But when yeah, I get you, out of the car and tell camera, you, yeah, and, and when I, I tell you to get back in I your said, car, what's going on? Times, I told I you, getting pulled over, get back up? in the car. He's been escalating every time we've dealt with him I'm the not last escalating. month. I'm not escalating. How am I escalating? Do you have a license on you? Yes or no? Right in my wallet. So can you, you can find it. Like, I'm not moving because I don't want to be Okay, so why like, didn't you stop when the deputy asked you to stop? Why'd you keep walking I was, away? I turned around and stood there, Blake. But why didn't you? I'll answer your question. I stood there and I said, he got out and he said, get in your car. And why didn't I said, you? what's up? But He's did, like, you're being pulled over. I'm like, for what? But you got and then he comes up and grabs me and throws me on my car. So you were not thrown on the car. Yes, dude. you did. But it's all on I camera. But how come you wouldn't listen to his commands? I walked towards him. I went to my car. So we asked. You're the one getting out. We wouldn't. We wouldn't. We wouldn't touch anybody if they were doing what we asked them to do. I was. I was standing there and I walked to my car. And to him, we're his servants. We're servants. In the white thing, you are public servant. And we don't have to listen to you. You don't have a license. Supreme Court, as you know, has already ruled on a traffic stop. We don't have to listen to a word you say. There's a time and a place which is court. This is the only white thing. I won't speak, man. If I'm not Steven listening, Bell, I won't is speak. That, is that, is that huh? What you said? What you're supposed to say? I'll lecture Stephen Bell. Stephen, what's your What's your date of birth? Stephen, what's your date of birth? All right, then buckle him up, take him to the office. He doesn't want to identify himself. We already know who he yeah, is. Yeah, he is. He's playing this. So the last couple of times, he's been Just start the paperwork, write everything. <coughs> so I'm you telling you right do. now, don't pull up next to me and try and chum me up because I'm sick of your crap. Do you understand me? Do you see me on the side of the road? Do not come talk to me. Steven, do you have insurance for the car? I have no fucking way. Steven, Steven, hey, enough is enough, okay? I stopped you for an inspection sticker violation. This is ridiculous. Do you have insurance for the car? Yes or no? Is it in the car? Club box. Do you give Corporal Allen permission not, to get it I'm, out? Because he'll do it. Who's it through? State Farm. There we go. I guess we'll try to get it from him then. Sergeant Allen now asks Officer Pocket some clarifying questions that are answered with blatant lies. So what, you just kept walking away from me? Yeah. No, I did not. And then I'm like, well, come back over here, and then I'm back and all. Well, I want the so, camera. And, and, last, and then I saw the guy, yeah, so I was like, no, we're not playing this game. And last time we I'm dealt with him, he had a new guy with <laughs> yeah, him you're that allowed was to like sovereign citizen. Yeah, you're allowed to carry it when you're not listening to my commands. Mm -hmm. Oh, is this Albert? Yeah, okay. the guy that you stopped. Yeah. So this is him right here. And then, like two weeks later, he's showing me up like we're buddies, even though, which is I fine. I didn't even talk to you. I was talking to Blake. I but why? Seen Blake in two but why would? But why wouldn't you listen to what he was telling you to do in the first place? I did. I walked towards him. I said, "What's up?" I asked a question. He being poor. I said, "For what?" But like you, I would if I was he, in my car. Or did he ask you to sit in the car? He asked me to go to the car, and I I stood by the car, and then he grabbed me and pushed well, me in the car. How many times did he ask you to this. get into the car? Once, and then I went over to the car, and he's like, "Oh, you have a gun." I'm like, okay. well, "I've known Deputy Pocket for a very long time." Well, it's it should be all goes. on the camera. Yeah, and, and the problem is too, due to the interaction last time where he was hostile with his passenger. How am I hostile? So now, due to the way you've been now acting lately, like, like you're going to hostile. No, no. no.
And there lies the problem with law enforcement in the United States. They are charged with being the defenders of our God-given rights, and are alleged to keep us free from those who would wish to take our property, life, or freedoms, whether the aggressors or citizens or their brotherly government officials. However, Corporal Allen believes that Stephen is, quote, hostile for refusing to answer the arbitrary questions posed by the state actors. It's apparent that he takes great offense to being treated as a figure of government authority should be treated, with silence. Though he likely sees himself as a great patriot, he ridicules Stephen for exercising the protected rights that separate the United States from every other country in the world. First, by telling Stephen to shut up. You act like this, a raging jerk, and with your mic. My... Stop interrupting me and What's shut your mouth. Car, tries to go inside, doesn't oh. listen to anything No, outside. wow, is we're sick of your crap and the ridiculous. way you act. Then making an issue over the mere possession of a firearm. And he had a gun. I was already out of the car. And finally, claiming that remaining silent is hostile. The last time where he was hostile with his passenger. And without even incorporating the unlawful search and seizure, which we'll get to in a moment, the deputy is betraying three of the first five amendments to the U.S. Constitution, which, if I'm doing my math correctly, makes him the least patriotic individual on scene. Obviously, you're the victim, as usual, which is fine. You have a right to be a victim. But, so when you act a certain way against us, then it escalates things. If you're cool with us, we're cool with you. But when now, lately, you've been two-faced the last couple times I've dealt with you. So now we don't trust you which is fine, but when you act a different way, HRE 281. But when you act this way a different way, then I see you outside and then you're like, hey, how's it going? Or you're, and then you try and be my buddy. Because I'm not on a traffic stop. So it doesn't matter. My We're doing a job. Same way on a traffic stop or not. Just we, because we wear a uniform and we come in contact with you. Because anything I say incriminates myself. It's a fifth amendment. If you would have just followed what he told you, he probably would have just gave you a warning and sent you on your way. I, no, so, I think there's more to this because, like I said, I've known what deputy. What do you think? I think you're lying. Can I talk real quick? So every time I know deputy Fawcett pretty well. Go through my whole car before. We don't need to search your car. We're before. not even you to. But you shouldn't. Do I treat you any differently whether I'm in uniform or out of uniform? No. Huh? No. So then don't treat me any differently because I'm wearing a uniform or I'm not wearing a uniform. Or you're on a traffic stop or not on a traffic stop. If you're just cool and calm with us, then we'll just go through the motions and get you out of here. We have better cool shit to do. Calm until I got I'm, I'm sure there's more passively the resisting when I got here. Because we don't just do that just for no you reason. You eye me one more time, we're gonna have problems. Like what? What sort of problems would a fine patriot like yourself create from being looked at? I'm sick of your shit. This isn't how, like... But you just said yourself that you treat us differently on traffic stops so obviously we're going to treat people like get pulled over i don't speak anymore because it incriminates yourself but you have to did, you, did he only ask I know you what simple my rights are but we do not law books. Yeah, i'm not exercising my rights that's it's fine okay well then we're going to exercise our rights on our private time that yes. we don't need to be friendly to people oh, yeah you won't talk to me we're not going to because we hate two-faced um, people and you just admitted so on camera like that you're two-faced because you treat us differently when we're we're just trying to provide for our families and keep so it safe out I. here. I'm just trying to survive. Even worthy. No, because so you. this is the new him now, just so you're aware. I wouldn't give him two seconds of your time anymore. Okay. We've always been cool with you. Citizen. Here we go. We're all free citizens. I didn't go through your wallet. So only right stuff that was out of it. But if you have to, if, but if you're here. traveling on the it's road, the but if you're Steven. traveling on the road, you have to follow the rules that the state of Vermont has governed. Pocket. Which means you have to listen to the police. Pocket. So that way it doesn't blow You have to over. listen to our lawful commands. And there's a time and a place to go. I was. And you're interrupting. That's well, not even. No, it's not. But just so, this is what I was telling you about after that traffic stop, how he's two-faced. Well, Wait. now he just admitted it to me that he's going to treat so me you're differently. you're speaking about me after traffic stops, which is... No, I put a 10-0 uh, code out because of your hostile thing to make sure my fellow uh, right. co-workers um, are safe because you obviously can't be trusted. And you just admitted on our camera that you treat us differently when we're in uniform when we're not. So you're the one that shouldn't be trusted. I don't treat anyone differently. It's, I'm not going to speak people on my traffic spot. No, which is your legal right. But in turn, for me, I've known you for a long time. Never had an issue with you, right? That's the thing. I know you guys personally. I just, I've always respected you guys. But when I was telling him the last time I pulled over, every time I go to New York, the more I say. I got a lawsuit then because they gave me three tickets that were all got thrown out. They were all yeah. unlawful. But we're I've not had New York. Bad experience. I know, but it's the mindset. It's hard. Sometimes it's hard. To but that's like it. saying for us that we have to treat everybody the same because we have a no. bad. So like, 
I can't help you with that situation, but I've never had an issue with you. Always been friendly, talked with you, no issues. I don't but want a problem. No one's saying you are. But what I'm saying is when you pers when you tell me that you're going to treat me differently if I stop you, that doesn't sit very well with me because now my I have to be heightened because you're going to treat me differently. I wasn't treating him any differently when he came here. Okay. I asked, what's going on? I used to pull over, so I walked towards him. Yeah, with a gun, which you're allowed to have, but yeah, when, so, have my hand but when you're not oh. listening to the police and you have a handgun on you, he doesn't know you. Speaking of lawfully carrying a firearm, first, it is important to note that it is unlawful to carry a firearm into a post office or other federal building, even with a carry permit. Aside from that and other exceptions, you may be wondering where Officer Pocket scurried off to. Well, at this time, he is unlawfully and needlessly extending the length of the traffic stop to find and run a serial number on Steven's revolver. <coughs> Grand L16, so I'm just gonna get a 99 gun check. Remember, Steven was not and is not suspected of criminal activity and is not believed to be dangerous. However, most states will allow a deputy to seize a gun as a matter of safety, but manipulating the cylinder to find a serial number and extending the stop to begin a separate investigation into the weapon is an absolute unlawful search and seizure. What if we what if we look at the body cam and you know or we can prove through dispatch right. that it added mm -hmm you know, a minute, 45 seconds to run that serial number through NCIC. Because like you said, the, the person is, you know, no indicators that are prohibited and no reason they shouldn't have it and, and is as a hip. So are you running a, a, a new investigation? You, you can't add time to the stop. No. There's no reason to believe that that person is committing any crime. And you cannot chase daisies here. You can't chase other, you know, like hunches. Just, start looking for you other stuff to see what you find. That's right. right. You can't just start chasing these other, you know, these investigations and adding time to the traffic stuff without something about some reasons. We don't ha like the guy that is has nothing going on except speeding and a gun. We should not add time to the traffic stop. Deputy Pocket's unlawful extension of the traffic stop added nearly two and a half minutes to the encounter. And in the deputy's own words. I stopped you for an inspection sticker violation. This is ridiculous. And during the extension, Stephen is forced to sit and listen to more of this. But it goes, you have every right to not answer questions or anything, but you do not have a right to disregard a lawful order. But I wasn't here, but I also know Deputy Pocket. It's just word against word, but I'm telling you, I just stood there. I didn't try to go in. He was did, giving did, did, he, did he ask you when to I step was back in the car? from the door, yep. he pulled in and hit the siren. I yep. turned around and I said, what's up? So like, you're being pulled over. I'm like, okay. And I walked towards the car. Yep. I'm like, for what? He's like, just go in the car. And I'm like, okay. And then he grabbed me and took me out of the car. So he was passively resisting when I got here, not listening and arguing. So he can say what he wants. I, I, if, if it's a fraction of what I saw, I know why Deputy Buckhead did what he did. The ones that are aggressive towards me. No, because you don't call. listen. You're because you I, don't listen. You cannot answer questions like the sergeant said, but you have to follow our lawful commands, no matter what. And if you don't want to, stay him, home. I let him pat me down. Oh, you resisting. let him pat you down. It's not even worth. No. Well, he wanted to. He wanted to grab me and put my hand. Well, on now my back. this is what what we so from here on out, don't come up to any of our cruisers unless it's you have a complaint to make or oh, a case. Fuck you guys. It's no, crazy. don't. Because now I don't trust you, especially if I'm wearing the uniform. Because you've already said you're basically like I don't know what you're gonna do, and you just Whatever. put on camera that you're treating us differently in uniform. So now you are not to be trusted. And you will be treated as such, just so you know. If I stop you, uh, you're gonna have zero chances. I want the camera. I'm gonna put a flare press for all this. That's know. fine. Yeah, so you can see yourself saying you you treat us differently in and out of uniform, uh, which is your right. But you can't treat people and say that and then it's expect not to be treated. People. It's exercising my rights on a traffic stop. Right, but the, your people. exercise for a right on a traffic stop is to not answer questions. Correct. I don't want to. I don't right. have to. But is it I don't get to talk to me there. Right, yeah. but you that doesn't mean you can't follow commands if given. Was. I'm just just hear me out. I'm not saying you did or didn't. I'm just and saying I always do follow commands. And if somebody I asks always, you for a license when you pulled me over to Albert, I gave him all my paperwork. I said, Here you go. Mm -hmm. And he was asking me all these questions. I said, Do you want to go on? I'm gonna get my tobacco. I'm going yep. home. 
I work 10 hours. Yeah. This is it. There's what? Drug testing, do everything. Nobody's asking. Don't say zero. I don't care. All we're asking is we treat it fairly. Years, and so just so you're aware, I'm sure you can't wear a gun into a federal building. You can't. So you just go into a federal crime. I didn't go in there. I'm just you're saying, I'm just educating. How I'm close not was saying the saying end of the building with this firearm? We're you, not accusing you, so don't. Off, right? Don't. Because don't because say it's that federal we building. are. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're accusing me of being something. And future reference, if you're going to the post office, probably not. I a, didn't see signage. It's federal building. Room. You can't. Okay, well, I didn't I'm see just, signage. I'm just, I didn't know. I'm just saying. Thank you for letting me know. I didn't Steven, know. Just I'm prevent. going to put your handgun on your passenger side seat. Do not touch the gun until we're done. Do you understand? Because you can get a federal offense <laughs> for that. I didn't know that. People get uppity, well, mostly in the post office, stuff like that. So this is your plan to get the windshield fixed soon? So yeah, so I wrote you a warning for the uh, inspection and the windshield, but the car is not registered. What? Nope. So I wrote you a ticket for that. It's $162 fine. <laughs> no points. Fines are preset by the state, not by me. You have 20 days to respond with the ticket. If you thought you would have 20 days, it's paid and tested. All the instructions are on the back of the ticket. Just follow those. You pay it online. Stephen was issued a ticket and took care of it, and he is now considering pursuing civil action. But regardless of whether or not he is successful, the important part is done. Publishing your experiences like this show that it is a widespread problem in the United States. Officers throughout the country continue to show us how often it is that they do not understand the law, let alone our constitutional rights and why we exercise them. But as always, I'm curious what you think of this interaction, so let me know in the comments down below. I will also link Stephen and Eric's channels in the description and pinned comment. If you head over there, be sure to let them know I sent you.